At the AFRAM conference in Chicago last August, Dr. Nina Lundberg, the AFRAM's postgraduate medical education director, had a chance to interview world-renowned anti-aging expert Dr. Edward Lichten about his groundbreaking research regarding diabetic men and the benefits of testosterone replacement therapy. Dr. Lichten, you spoke yesterday at a general session at AFRAM conference. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about your presentation? Yesterday, what I presented to more than 3,000 attendees was the concept that hormones interact. So a man with diabetes has low testosterone. So instead of going to using more and more insulin and oral agents, mm -hmm. I showed the data that by replacing testosterone in men reduces insulin requirements by half. And you actually can reduce the need for oral agents by even more than that. Now, what's really fascinating about this discovery is that adding testosterone not only helps take the sugar out of the bloodstream and store it, but allows the body to release that stored glycogen to sugar. The biggest problem with managing diabetics is that they crash. They don't have the ability to pull that sugar out. And what we've discovered over the last 12 years of research is that these men don't crash. Even the diabetic who is on uses the wrong insulin, fails to eat, that they have a safety level that changes the whole management of diabetes because most endocrinologists will keep the blood sugars relatively high. They're afraid of that blood sugar crash coma and death. Now with this one change, just replacing testosterone because it's shown to be deficient, studies out of Harvard, studies I did 10, 12 years ago, that by replacing the testosterone first, there's a safety level and you can bring down the blood sugars and improve the quality of life and decrease the morbidity for the 10 million men we have in the United States with diabetes and probably the 20 million that don't know they're diabetic. Is it any difference in the effectiveness of testosterone replacement in type 1 and type 2 diabetes? The answer is yes and no. What happens is we're able to show that the diabetics who are using very large amounts of insulin, like 100 units, we're able to de decrease their need for insulin by 50%. So they can get the same control with half as much insulin, half as much cost. With 90% of all diabetes being type 2, which we'll say is overeating type is issues, interestingly, the testosterone by itself will replace and eliminate the need for oral agents in up to two-thirds of these patients, a tremendous cost savings. But from a scientific standpoint, there's something called a glucose tolerance test, where you drink sugar. I always measure insulin levels at the same time, and that can tell me which patient is a type 1 and which patient's a type 2. And interestingly, half of the patients who are type 2 by definition are really burned out and are type 1s. So if you give someone who can't produce insulin all these oral agents, you're just throwing the money down the toilet. Thank you very much, doctor, for spending time with us today. It's a fascinating subject, and we were very happy to have you presenting at the American Academy of Italian Medicine show. Thank you.